this is kind of an interesting graph that I picked up from um, online. It shows you different, the overall cycle that I was talking about. Remember I was saying, if you take the maximums and then you just plot the maximums, just, just the maximums, that's what this is. This is the present calendar, calendar years before present. So this is the present right now. What they've done is they took the maximum sun, number of sunspots and they just plotted that. And if you go back in time, you notice that the maximums go down 100 years ago. Then it goes down. Then it goes up. Then it goes down. 300 years ago, even the maximums of the solar spots were very low, you see? Then 400 years ago, it goes back up. Then it goes back down. Then it goes back up. It goes back down. Then it goes back up. Then it goes back down. You see that? So there is generally... There is an overall pattern. You see, sun gets more active, less active, more active, less active. Now, one of the things that they do here is they write down what has taken place. You see, right now we're called modern maximum. During 300 years ago, during the 1600s, there was a period of time known as the Maunder minimum. Europe, Northern Europe particularly, experienced a little ice age. It became very cold. So that makes sense because the sun was very inactive. The temperature on the earth was affected by the sun's activity. One of the things that they've done is they have kind of uh, researched this and they have found out that when the sun is inactive for a very long periods of time, not only is the temperature of the earth um, affected, but certain ancient civilizations disappeared from the earth. That means they weren't getting enough energy from the sun to sustain their uh, daily living. Uh, so uh, I believe in one of these, like the Sporer Minimum uh, or the Wolf Minimum, if you go back, either the Mayans were the dead, died and uh, died out and uh, were eliminated, and then other such civilizations like that. Uh, this is kind of an interesting topic for me, and uh, I would like to extend an opportunity for you to do your report on this one. Um, some students in the past have done their second report on this topic. Uh, the, the relationship of sunspot cycles to the temperature on the Earth, this is, the, this is what the topic would be. The relationship of sunspot cycles to the temperature on the Earth, and particularly to its influence on cultures and how they live, and whether they died or not because the sun was less active. I think that would be very interesting to find out if that is actually true during these minimums, wolf minimum. What happened during the medieval maximum? What happened during the Urt minimum, you know, thousand years ago? Did another civilization die out? So that would be kind of interesting to research about. The Maunder Minimum, that's the one that I was referring to 300 years ago. During that time, there was a little ice age. Unusually low number of sunspots that were observed in the 17th century. See, that's this one that I showed earlier, too. This one here. You see, even the maximums here were very low. Even the maximums, very low for about 100 years. You see? Now, there's another picture of that, the Maunder Minimum. Oh, this is another interesting graph, too. What they do is they show you the correlation between... <laughs> the correlation between the number of sunspots on the sun and the sea surface temperature on the Earth. This has been pretty well documented. When the sun is a little more active, less active, the sea temperature goes down. If the sun is more active, the sea surface temperature goes up by a tad bit, but it is noticeable. You see? So the climate on Earth is definitely affected by what the sun is doing. Some people think that the little ice age experienced in Europe and North America might be related to 
this phenomenon. The Maunder minimum, uh, also discovered by the same scientist, his name is Maunder, the Maunder butterfly diagram depicts the shape of the sunspots. So the Maunder minimum is a different thing. It's the low number of sunspots. The Maunder butterfly diagram is how the sunspots are occurring and where they are occurring. Depicts the shape of the sunspots as they appear in their 11-year cycle. So this is what we found out. When the new sunspot cycle begins, the sunspots append, again uh, 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 start appearing a little north of the sun's equator and a little south of the sun's equator, okay? When the first sunspot cycle begins. And then after a course of year, a year or two years, a uh, couple years, so on, they start appearing closer and closer to the equator. So uh, when they first appear, they appear at about 35 degrees latitude, which means above and below the equator. And when the sunspot cycle ends, they end closer to the equator. The sunspots are occurring closer to the equator. Hmm, very interesting. And then why do they call this the butterfly? Well, once you see this picture, you will understand why it's called the butterfly. Look like a butterfly? You see, when the sunspot cycle first begins, right here, they start appearing, after several years, they appear closer to the equator, and it goes like that, and then it looks like a butterfly, especially if you look at it vertical, it looks more like a butterfly, you know? And then another sunspot cycle, another sunspot cycle. So you can see here, the sunspot cycle begins here, right here, then it goes down, and then another one begins, it goes down, and then uh, over here, after 2010, a new one is starting, and the same pattern will occur. So that's the Maunder butterfly diagram.